Hey, 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 it's the Unique Shanique, and you're going to want to stay tuned if you're still in the longing phase and feeling a little bit disappointed. So I just want you to know that I can relate. I can relate to your longing for a partner in the same way that I relate to my longing for new friendships. Um, I have good friendships, but I'm longing for that deep soul connection at where I am in life now, right? So in the same respects, you in the back of your mind are longing for uh, an everlasting partnership where it feels good and it feels right and it's mutual. And that's what I would like. So just like you probably get triggered by Valentine's Day, I was triggered because... I noticed friends of mine getting together and I was not invited. You know, it just makes me question me, myself, my worth, how I do things. And it's like, what would possess you to not call me and include me? I've made it blatantly obvious, I think, that, oh, hey, I like you, right? So, you know, you go away, you have, I mean, I... I went out of my way and made it obvious that I like so many of these people and I'm interested in pursuing something long term friendship wise. I don't want just light, airy, fluffy and for a party like I want to have a real connection and I'm it's just like it's in my face that I don't have it. And it's a reminder that I don't have it. And not having what I want kind of stinks. It's just a little bothersome. I'm a little lonely, but so not lonely. I don't even have time to do the things I want to do. So I really shouldn't be feeling any type of way. Like I had things to do. So what would I be doing hanging out with a friend right now? But here's the thing. I just want to be wanted and needed and called and cared for. I just want somebody to be like, hey, how's your day? And then I say this, and then people who do call me and check on me, I'm like, why are you calling me? Why are you stalking me? What do you want? Why are you asking me so many questions, you know? And these are the things I battle. And this is exemplary of pushing away what you're asking for. So right now, the type of inner work that I need to do um, and I just want to take you guys through it. So I, I feel the emotions. I don't just go and get a drink. I'm not calling somebody up out of the blue. I'm not throwing myself in, ignoring how I'm feeling. And I'm also choosing not to wallow in the sadness. I'm experiencing it, okay? I am objectively looking at it. I'm putting it in my hand, I'm chewing it up, and I want to feel all the feels, and I want to be um, real with myself and just admit, yes, I'm sad, because in my mind, I'm feeling a bit lonely. Not in a relational way, not in a family way, but in a sisterhood way. Or male, I'm open to male friends. Um, but in that platonic friendship type of way, I want someone to call me and see how my day is going. Um, kind of like a friend I used to have in high school who would do it and it would really throw me off because I'd be like, why are you calling me? Just to say, hey, like, do you not have anything to do? Are you bored? But now that I'm in my healing, well, healed pretty much, but still working on myself phase, I realized that was my trauma response because I did not know how to connect with people. And because I guess I'm not receiving the results that I want to receive in my head, okay, because we all have this ideal of what we want. And I have friendships pictured in my head a certain way, and it's not coming to me as I want it if I call I have people to hang out with 
That's not the problem here. They will say yes. They'll hang out with me. Um, you know, I'm not saying people have ill will. I just want to know, why am I not on their first to call list of, hey, what's up? How's it going? Why am I not on that list to go do something? But the thing is that I am on that list for some people, but I feel like I'm like fifth or eighth on that list. I want to be number one to a friend. That's what I want. So I can blame everyone else in this moment, or I can step back and assess. And I always, I always look at self. Okay. I tell my clients to look at self and I look at myself too. not to blame self, but to take ownership. Okay. I'm not a victim anymore. We're thrivers, right? So if I am to be like nine, 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 you, 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 they, 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 then that means I have absolutely no control in my future. And I'm not okay with that. I do have control because I've had control in other areas of my life. And when I say control, I don't mean 100% control. I just mean like 60% control. You know what I mean? Or 40% and God has 60. But majority of things in my life, I have to some degree control over. And I'm not just going to throw my hands in the air and go cry and wallow and complain. I want an answer. I need a solution. I want to know my blind spots. I need to understand what I'm doing wrong because I don't have what I want. What I want is a mutually beneficial platonic friendship with someone who has children, not pets, children, human children, someone who is young-ish, you know, within 10 years of me, someone who loves to get dressed up, but also someone who will sit under a tree and journal. Um, I'm looking for my other half. I'm looking for someone who's not going to feel competitive when they see me and triggered and decide that they want to start a business now because I have one, you know, or whatever. Just someone who is them authentically, someone who knows who they already are, someone who can pour into me. Someone who's fun, exciting. Someone who I can grow with. Because I'm sure I'll be changing. And when I do change, I hope they are still changing too for the better. So, you know, I don't think I'm asking for too much. And I don't think that you are either. I think it's perfectly normal to have desires and goals. And when we have these desires and goals, it's very important to understand that we don't always receive what we want when we want. So that's what I hold on to, right? We don't always receive what we want when we want it because it's not always meant for us at the time that we want it. There's growing an evolution that comes with receiving what you want. In order to receive, you must become that which you want to attract. I've come a long way in terms of relationships. I've been on this sisterhood journey for some years now since I started dealing with my childhood sexual trauma with other women. So I I understood, I had to well learn. That's why I was not having any relationships platonically with women. And instead, would just throw myself into relationships with guys that was not platonic. But what I was searching for was friendship, not necessarily love. So now that I do have, I would say, third degree friendships with so many women, 
um, I'm, I'm enjoying them. I'm loving this journey of understanding female friendships and understanding sisterhood and, you know, what's required of me as a friend. I had to learn so many things along the way, you know, like not always trying to fix people, save that for clients. Um, what else? The necessity to be vulnerable, which is something that I just started doing. I'm still not anywhere near where I should be with the vulnerability component that's required for friendship. And I had met this guy who I was talking to, and I swear he was a, a mirror to how I show up in friendships. Because he was explaining to me um, his dating life, and through the eyes of his sister and his daughter, they think that he's weird because he doesn't pick up on social cues of when women are hitting on him. Um, you know? And then he also mentioned how when he would go out on dates, he was told, like, he's too intense or weird or whatever. And I'm like, oh, wow, I've been called intense a lot. And I'm sure weird behind my back, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. But as someone who's weird, intense, different, a lot to chew, highly opinionated, very independent thought, thinking, um, I live outside of the box. I never want to go in it. And it feels stifling when I have to pretend that I live in a box because my mind is so out there. My mind is out there because I don't believe that I know everything and I like to be open to learning, as should anyone. So, looking at him talking and then looking at him not talking because he was so busy thinking, I could feel the intensity and it was scary. And I'm like, oh my God, is this what I'm doing to people? <laughs> Is this the intense feeling vibes that I give out? I hope not. What has helped me loosen up around people is to have a drink. I don't know if you have to do that too, but I do. And it really helps me to be less in my head, more in my body, and activate some of those other lower chakras, the ones in the middle specifically. So, I've worked on loosening up, and I feel like it's paid off. I do have people who have put me in their third ring. I just need to figure out how to get into that second ring of friendship and then that first ring with new people. Um, I love my friends that I do have now. They're wonderful. They're great. I just feel like. We are on such different life paths now that I don't feel like it's mutually what a friendship should be. I think we should move a little differently only because we're growing apart. And I'm just going to put it out there that I'm praying to receive my kingdom friends who call me first because once they start calling me first then I will definitely be open to doing that too I feel like I put myself out there so much lately I'm finally building thick skin which is required guys for whatever you want business wise career wise friendship wise we have to develop that thick skin to just keep trying and not give up because some people say no. We have to live in the land of no, as my favorite mentor always says, Rich Litvin, live in the land of no. He swears that he can tell how successful coaches are by how many no's they receive is what he says. So our, our goal is to go out there and collect no's because in no's lives yes. You can't get a yes until you get a lot of no's. 
So I used to get so heartbroken and hung up when a friendship would end because I'd make one person my focus and my everything. So I've gone out there and I've been cast in a super huge wide net and I'm just trying to see what bites and what sticks and it's like I'm fishing and I'm fishing but I'm not receiving yet. Just getting little fish and I'm just waiting for that big tuna and the big salmon, you know, something big to hook on my line. So if you're out there waiting to catch your fish too, I just want you to understand that you're not alone and understand that there's a process to receiving and there's a beauty in the longing and the joy. And I think that beauty is humbleness. It's humbling to have to wait to receive the gift that we want the most. The one that's embarrassing to admit. The one that hurts the heart just a bit, you know? The beauty is that when we finally receive it, we're going to cherish it so much more. When we finally receive it, we will not fumble the bag, okay? We're going to appreciate our gift so much more. So just stay hopeful, guys. Understand that you're not alone on this journey. I'm here too. Um, and sometimes things don't go according to plan, even though everything else in our life is going so well. Right? I have so many other things going well. My business is doing well. I want to say it's the most successful thing in the world, but I'm happy with where it is and how it's growing. Um, very happy with my relationship with my husband. That's a beautiful thing there. Happy with my children and how they're doing and growing and developing and happy with the relationship I have with my mom and dad, which it could always be better, but it's sure night and day from how it used to be. So that's amazing. You know, and I have success in those areas of my life because I worked on them. There were moments when I was not having success in all of those areas and I focused on it so right now I'm focusing on friendships as you are focusing on whatever you're focusing on and I went to a retreat towards the end of last year um, a spiritual retreat and they asked for anyone who wanted to speak towards the end of it and I had no intentions of speaking or going up, but God raised my hand and I went and I spoke on um, the sisterhood, the unity and friendship and how it's been budding for me and building. And I'm so glad I got to connect with the ladies that I did while I was there and how beautiful it was. And I'm on stage crying and everyone in the room is crying. And it was just so vulnerable because I've never told anyone out loud um, that I'm lonely and longing for friendships because I've always put on a front like I don't need anyone. And the reason I didn't need anyone is because I was, um, am I guess, recovering avoidant attached person. So I tend to avoid just so I don't get hurt. But I'm at the point now because I've worked on my root chakra, I feel the sense of security. Um, so I'm not afraid of being hurt anymore. I'm not afraid of being alone and I'm not afraid of being seen or vulnerable finally. And now that I'm okay with being honest about my shortcomings or my truest desires, I feel like that is such a huge breakthrough because even admitting it out loud was not happening. And folks, this took years, years to get to the point where I would admit out loud these things, years. So please just give yourself grace along your journey, okay? This, there is no, when it comes to life coaching, and uh, leveling up spiritually and emotionally, you can't buy leveling up spiritually. You cannot buy leveling up emotionally. It's a process you have to grow and go through, point blank, period. And I think that is what makes life coaching so hard for people. It's like, how do you conceptualize that? How do you package that? How do you explain to them that this is going to go on and on and on? This is a lifelong journey. And this is how I explained it to my client the other day. And I told her, do you ever finish cleaning your house? Do you ever finish the laundry? Do you ever finish the dishes? You might finish it for this half of the day 
but guarantee you by the second half of the day, you will have laundry to, to wash. You will have dishes to wash, something to fold, a floor to sweep, a window to clean. There's going to be something to clean and pick up. It's never ending and neither is inner growth. It's never ending. And I think when we realize that, we can start to sink into the fact that we're on a journey. And this journey is a beautiful thing that we are supposed to enjoy. While we figure out our purpose, while we figure out what we need, while we figure out what we want, we are supposed to enjoy the ride and not stress. And just realize that these feelings and emotions that flood us, these are ingredients that make life full and spicy instead of bland and boring. Embrace the pain, embrace all the feelings that feel ugh. And instead of throwing it up, just let it settle. Sit still, stop hanging upside down and running around. Sit still, let the food settle and digest it. And just come to terms with the fact that Life is going to suck sometimes and life is going to like. But one thing's for sure, we will go on. One thing's for sure, God will walk with us if we want him to. One thing's for sure, we have the power to succeed. We can do it. It's within us. It's in our mindset. It's our choice to choose what we want to focus on, where we, how we want to transmute this energy that we're feeling. There's energy everywhere around us. You know, I'm feeling lonely as you may be and or maybe sad or maybe disappointed that you don't have what you want. But we can put that light, that energy and and put it towards the darkness. Or we can take that energy and put it towards the light and positivity and see the good in the bad and see how we can learn from it and grow from it and become our best versions, right? Who we are is so important. And who I am right now in this particular situation is someone who is strong in the future, someone who is vulnerable in the present, and someone who just learned from the past. And someone who's going to continue to grow, and that is you too. Don't let anyone damper your light, take away your shine, or make you feel disappointed or unworthy because you don't have what you want right now. And when I say anyone, that anyone is you, your inner critic, right? Don't let that inner critic ruin your day or ruin your energy and bring you down vibrationally. You want to raise your vibration every day, okay? It's liberty, it's how we live, and how we live is consciously, and that comes with every emotion that we feel. We have to be in charge, okay? You need to go pray about it, go do that. You need to go meditate, go do that. You need to journal about it. You need to talk to someone about it, like me, and bounce some ideas off if you don't have the strength. You know, find it from somewhere, and don't allow the pain to consume you, or make you do things that you will regret later or anything drastic, okay? I love you all. I'm the unique Shanique, and I'm complete. Stay empowered, fam. Mm.